Gene mapping is the process that involves finding the positions of genes on chromosomes and also determining what the distance is between the genes on a given chromosome. Now, typically in genetics and biology, we express the distance between any two genes on a given chromosome by using special units known as map units or recombination units. So these two terms are basically used interchangeably. They mean the same exact thing. Now, as we'll see in just a moment, to actually calculate the map units, the distance between our two genes in map units, we have to calculate the percent recombination between those two genes. So to see exactly what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following example. In this example, we're going to discuss how to calculate the percent recombination between two genes and how to use the percent recombination to find what the map units are, what the distance is in map units between those two genes. So let's begin by taking a look at the following diagram. So in this diagram, what we're basically doing is we're taking two types of fruit flies. So in this example, we're going to study fruit flies. Now we're going to study two types of traits and we're going to assume that the traits are in fact linked. So we're going to study the color trait, which is linked to our wing type trait. So we have two types of colors and two types of wings. We have the color gray, which is dominant over the color black. And the color gray is given by uppercase, <clears throat> uppercase G. The color black is given by lowercase g. By the same exact token, we have two types of wing types. We have normal wings and we have vestigial wings. Now, normal wings, which are functional, are given by uppercase N. And vestigial wings, which are non-functional, are given by lowercase n. So in this example, in this experiment, we're basically mating a female individual that is homozygous dominant for the color trait and homozygous recessive for the wing trait with a with a male individual, so we're mating this with a male individual that is homozygous, recessive for the color, and homozygous dominant for the wing type. Now, in A, what is the genotype of the F1 generation offspring that is produced when we mate these two individuals? To actually determine what the genotype is, we first have to answer the question, what are the gametes produced by, what are the gametes that are produced by these two types of individuals? So let's begin with our female individual. So we have uppercase G, uppercase G, lowercase n, lowercase n. So uppercase G, uppercase G, lowercase n, lowercase n. And before they actually mate, they have to produce our gametes, the sex cells. And in this case, because we have female, these are going to be X cells. Now, because we're assuming these genes are linked, that means they're located on the same exact chromosome. And in this particular case, if you carry out the process of meiosis, we only have one type of gamete that can actually form, and that gamete will have a chromosome that contains an uppercase G, a lowercase n. So this is our X cell, and this is equivalent to basically redrawing it in the following diagram. So we have this chromosome that contains lowercase n g and uppercase g, uh, lowercase n gene and uppercase g gene. And so 100% of our gametes will look like this. Okay. Now we're crossing it with a male that is lowercase g, lowercase g, uppercase n, uppercase n. And likewise, by the same exact reasoning, if we carry out the process of meiosis, we'll see that only one type of gamete can actually be formed in this particular case. In fact, 100% of the gametes will have this genotype as shown. So lowercase g, uppercase n. So it's a sperm cell, so let's designate that with this squiggly line. So we can either designate it this way, 
or by using the chromosome symbol. So we have lowercase g, uppercase n. Okay, so 100% of these genes will basically look like this. So this produces this sperm cell, this produces this, uh, this X cell. When they combine to form the zygote, we basically form, <clears throat> so this chromosome combines with this chromosome, and we form the following uh, zygote that contains uppercase G, lowercase n, so uppercase G and lowercase n, and then we have lowercase g, uppercase n, that comes from this, right? So we have lowercase n, so let's write that like so, oh, I'm sorry, uppercase n, then we have lowercase n here, so lowercase n, uppercase g, that came from the female, and lowercase g, that came from the male. And so, this will be the genotype of all the offspring produced in the F1 generation. So F1 generation genotype. Okay, now let's move on to part B. In part B, when we mate an F1 generation female, so what that means is we take a female that has the same genotype as the F1 generation. And what that basically means is this is the F1 generation. So we have a female that has a genotype that is low, uh, uppercase G, lowercase G, uppercase N, lowercase N. And we mate this with a homozygous recessive male that is homozygous recessive for both traits. So homozygous recessive for both traits means we have lowercase g, lowercase g, lowercase n, lowercase n. So when we mate or cross an F1 generation female, this individual here, with a homozygous recessive male, this individual here, we obtain 2,000 offspring. So we have 2,000 individual fruit flies. Now, if we assume that the traits, the color trait and this wing type trait are linked, that means they are located on the same chromosome, but we assume no crossing over actually took place, what will be the expected genotype distribution between those 2,000 offspring that are produced? So basically, the entire point of part B is to note that no genetic recombination actually takes place because no crossing over takes place. So once again, to determine what the genotypes of the offsprings are, we have to find what the gametes that are produced are. So we have two types of gametes in this particular case. The question is why? Well, because no crossing over actually took place. And what that basically means is the same two gametes that were combined to produce this F1 offspring, so namely this gamete and this gamete, will be produced in this particular uh, case because no new recombinant gametes are actually formed because no crossing over actually took place. And so when meiosis actually takes place, so we replicate these, then they divide to form haploid cells. Those haploid cells divide. What we form are a gamete that contains uppercase G, lowercase n, and a gamete that contains up a lowercase g, uppercase n. So one of these gametes will contain a chromosome that has uppercase G, so uppercase G, lowercase n, right? Why? Well, because this individual contains these two chromosomes, meiosis takes place, separates them, and so we have uppercase G, lowercase n, and then this one has the other one, lowercase g, uppercase n, so lowercase g, 
uppercase N. And so 50% of the gametes will have this genotype and the other 50 will have that genotype. So 50% this, 50% that. Now in this particular case, things are quite simple because we only, uh, we only form one type of sperm cell that contains uppercase G, lower, uh, lowercase G, lowercase N. So lowercase G, lowercase N, and that is 100% of the offspring. And so this always forms this, but this can form two. Now, if this combines with this, what we basically form is offspring number one that contains, well, we basically have uppercase G, lowercase g, or um, it should be uppercase g with this green color and lowercase g with this green color and then lowercase n, lowercase n. So lowercase n, lowercase n. The second type of offspring that is produced is, so if this combines with this, we have lowercase g, lowercase g, uppercase n, lowercase n. And because this is 50% and 100%, so 0.5 times 1 gives us 0.5, so a half of the 2,000 or 1,000 of the offspring will have this, and the other 1,000 are going to have this genotype right over here. So 1,000 of the offspring will have this genotype here. The other 1,000 will have this genotype here. Now, what exactly is the phenotype of this? Well, uppercase G is dominant over lowercase G. So that means we have a gray wingless because we're going to have vestigial non-functional wings. And then we have uh, lowercase G, lowercase G is black and uppercase N, lowercase N is normal wings because uppercase N is dominant over lowercase N. So we have functional wings. So a thousand are gray wingless, the other thousand are black and winged. Now this is if we assume that no crossing over took place, but crossing over does normally take place. And that's exactly what we discuss in part three. Suppose that the actual F2 distribution was as follows. Instead of having this hypothetical distribution, because crossing over does take place, we produce this distribution. So notice that now, not only do we have the gray and wingless, and the black and winged as we have in this case, we also have the gray winged and the black winged. And these two here are actually the recombinant offsprings and they're produced as a result of crossing over as a result of the production of recombinant chromosomes. So we are given that 895 are gray wingless, 905 are black winged, but 110 are gray winged and 90 are black wingless. To make a total of, if we sum these up, we obtain 2,000 offspring. So the question is, what is the recombination frequency between the two traits, the color traits and that wing type trait? And to find the recombination frequency, also known as percent recombination, what we basically do is we sum up all the offspring that are recombinant. So 110 plus 90, so 110 plus 90, this is the total number of offspring that are recombinant. And we divide it by the total number of offspring, so 2,000 offspring. And what we get is 200 divided by 2,000, and that gives us, once we reduce it, to 1 tenth. And that's equivalent to 0.1. Now, this is our recombination frequency. And to find the percent recombination, we basically multiply 0.1. So we multiply 0.1 times 100%, and we get 10% is our percent recombination between those 
to genes. It's basically, it basically tells us how many of those offspring are a result of the process of crossing over. Now, we can use this to calculate what the recombination units are or the mapping units. And to basically do that, we have to remember that one map unit or one recombination unit is equal to 1% 1 per, uh, 1 recombination. So we have 1% And so by using this ratio, this proportion, we know that because we have 10% recombination, that means we have 10 map units or 10 recombination units between those two genes. So what that means is if we examine our chromosome, okay, along that chromosome, we have, let's say, this gene right here that is 